morning is sports bang and um, interestingly it's a friday so it's an opportunity uh, to just get to win you know win from all sides your turn we'll give you the best and the latest in the world of sports we'll show you of that you know bolo started with that um you know that ginger song <laughs> i'll say uh my name is tunde olawo and of course sport bang will run from now till eight o'clock our friends on twitter uh show up let's do this again remember we have our online game uh, that we play every Friday. And this morning, uh, it's going to be not going to be an exception. Yes, um, I'm the first player to score more than 20 goals and also provide more than 10 assists in a single MLS season. So don't go telling me about Kevin De Bruyne or um, Lene Messi. In the MLS, that's yeah. a very important. Uh, let us know. Send your answers in before 7.45 uh, this morning. And let's see. Uh, we'll get uh, the we'll get this one right. Good morning to you guys, Ayobami. Yeah, good morning to you, Cindy. Yeah, good morning to Fritz, uh, to Bolu, to Chacha, and to the listener out there. I mean, it's such a great uh, feeling to be on the MIC once again. I mean, we had um, a somewhat um, uh, interesting Thursday night. I mean, for the very first time in a long while, the UEFA Nations League is back, and it sat us with um, a bit of interesting fixtures, especially the one that had um, Spain recording a late night 50 minute goal to level things against Germany. Germany. I'm quite sure Chelsea fans would perhaps, you know, be basking on the euphoria of the fact that one of their new signings, you know, got on the score sheet for Germany last time of Werner. And indeed, they could also be having another German in their ranks in the foreseeable future. So I'm quite elated uh, to be on Sports Bank this lovely Friday morning. We'll also be doing a quick round from the US Open. Yes. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's um, it's going strong, uh, despite the fact that uh, some top uh, players, you know, opted out of this one. But yeah. it's still, you know. And surprisingly, so even Open. some top guys also got knocked out. You know, you see that every worry. time. Hmm. Fate. How did you? Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning, Ayobami. And of course, to our red listeners, another winning Friday edition of Sports Bank. And we are all elated. We are all buzzing. We are all excited to be here today. Ah, it's the 4th of September. And uh, well, it's, uh, it's a, a rather solemn one, a little bit uh, this morning. It just reminds me of, uh, you know, the death of uh, the... The, the manager, one of our legendary, uh, you know, coaches for the Super Eagles, the man that uh, won the first African Cup of Nations title for the uh, Super, uh, no, the Green Eagles, as it was called then in 1980. Talking about uh, Otto Gloria, he died on this day in 1986. That was about uh, some 34 uh, years ago. Very, very uh, good uh, Brazilian manager. Uh, he did so well, won the Portuguese league uh, several uh, with Benfica about four times, won with Sporting as well. Then I also did well with the Portuguese uh, national team. I was able to win uh, bronze. He got to the semi finals of the 1966 World Cup, won uh, the bronze with Portugal. Then eventually uh, came up to win uh, the African Cup of Nations with uh, the Green Eagles, someone that uh, you know, they, many people call the professor. You know, I remember uh, watching a documentary where uh, Chief Shegon Degbami was talking about the day before the final against Algeria in 1980, where he saw in the middle of the night, he saw uh, uh, Gloria, uh, you know, still on, on the board. They don't have, uh, they didn't have the kind of uh, facilities coaches have now where they have data analytics and all those. He had already played the entire game in his mind. And well, I think it's uh, a very good day to uh, to remember and to remember all I has been able to do for Nigerian football as a whole. Yes, so we remember Otto Gloria. You know, especially for the feat he achieved uh, with our team. You know, was on the twenty second of March, nineteen eighty. Uh, it was a team made up entirely of home based players. Yeah. You know, that that makes it special. You know, ICC Rangers, Calabar Rovers, and a few other clubs basically supplied our national team. And I, uh, and I also say maybe his, his achievements also paved way for the influx of several other foreign managers um, to come and coach the Super Eagles because I think some way some I was able to put a landmark and of course, you know, set the tone as well for so many other foreign based coaches uh, such that if you know you are getting the Super Eagles job, there's already a standard which you would definitely measured up with and only just a handful of other you know um, non-nigerian coaches that have the super eagles have been able to just repeat the same fit so it is such a great feeling and a great day to remember such um, an outstanding manager especially in the history of the super eagles okay so we remember to gloria and we move on this morning because our time definitely is not awaiting uh, quickly from the u.s open and Demore was overpowered by felix olga alisime in the u.s open second round losing six two six three six four 
in New York, Dominithium comfortably progressed to the U.S. Open third round, beating India's uh, summit Nagao 6-3, 6-3, The Austrian second seed celebrating his 27th birthday with next phase 2014 champion Manny Sudic, who overcame Norbert Gombo 6-3, 1-6-7-6, 7-5. There was a surprise as uh, Vasek Pospisil knocked out fellow Canadian Milos Raonic 6-3-7-6-6-3. Serena Williams battled her way through to a 6-2, 6-4 victory over Russia's Margarita Gasparian in the second round of the US Open on Thursday as she continued her bid for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title. Two-time Grand Slam champion Gabin Muguruza, well, sadly, has been knocked out of the US Open, losing in straight set to Zvetna uh, Pirinkova. The Bulgarian will play Kratz. 18th seed uh, Donald Vekic next in New York. Elsewhere, Australian Open champion Sophia Kenin. Okay, sincere apologies about that one. We get going on Sports Bank uh, this morning. Yes, I told you earlier about Australian Open champion uh, Sophia Kenin defeating uh, Canada's Leila Fernandez 6463. Let's jump straight into the world of Formula One, where Sunday's Italian Grand Prix will be held behind closed doors due to the COVID 19 pandemic. But 250 doctors and nurses will watch from the grandstands as guests. Ferrari said on Wednesday, out of their own race. The race at Monza outside Milan is the eighth round of a Formula One season that has so far been staged without live spectators, with teams operating in isolated bubbles and limited media in attendance. Ferrari said the medics who will keep socially distanced were being invited as a symbolic honor for their courage, sense of duty, and altruism as frontline workers in the fight against COVID-19. And perhaps, you know, what is unsaid here is that um, in case of any eventualities, I believe, um, you know, they will come in and... <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, basketball, two-time NBA Most Valuable Player Steven Nash has become a head coach for the first time after being appointed by the Brooklyn Nets. Nash spent 18 seasons representing Phoenix Suns, Dallas Mavericks and Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA until the year 2015. Nash was inducted into basketball's Hall of Fame in 2018, already has a relationship with star forward Kevin Durant after the pair worked together at Golden State and wish him all the best. And talking about uh, the results of two games played, Bolton Celtics, you know, were defeated by just uh, one point, you know, against um, Toronto Raptors. It was 104 to 103. And um, early Clippers, you know, they were able to overpower uh, Denver Nuggets, 120 to 97. Now, let's come back to football. This week has been dominated entirely by the rumors around whether Lionel Messi will stay or leave uh, FC Barcelona this summer. There is a 90% chance Lionel Messi will fulfill the remainder of his Barcelona contract until summer 2021. That's according to a particular report. But the question is, how will this pan out? It looks like their relationship has broken down beyond repairs. But in the world of football, maybe there's always a comeback fit. Ah, well, yes. Uh, there's always, uh, we, we know we always have these uh, shocking uh, new things that would always happen in the world of football. But I feel uh, Lionel Messi should just go. Barcelona, uh, they're making another wrong decision if they're trying to. A wrong uh, decision? Yeah, a wrong decision. Like because keeping Messi? No, because at the end of uh, the 2021 season, he will be going for free. But and it I will be 34. Maybe it, money is not the problem. <laughs> but then he should uh, make something of, of the Messi deal. Are you sure Messi would even 
even give his best uh you know going into this but don't season. forget he wants to live on a free even now and then you understand uh the, the player mutiny that can actually come into the camp you know he, he has uh, brought a fractious uh, relationship already in that camp there could be a disarray especially when you are bringing in a new manager he shouldn't uh, start on this kind of note he shouldn't have to i know that steady whether keep... messi lives or not some players are already leaving uh, well, so there's yes. a major problem on ground but keeping messi at least 50 percent like some will say he, he accounts for more like 50 percent of what the team well, actually maybe it's to give them time to actually prepare for his eventual departure but uh barcelona over the course of the last few years have been known for making horrible decisions we saw how uh, they tried to replace neymar after neymar left they've made they brought in Coutinho, they brought in uh Osmani dembele they brought in griezmann all uh, all those transfers have not exactly worked but they're still out. in the team <laughs> yeah they're still in the team but they've not exactly maybe they work out. out this new season uh, uh, with uh well with a scattered camp you never can tell <laughs> I, I i just i just feel that the relationship are so broken to the point whereby you know whatever it is is going to turn out to be the eventual decision would really leave all the parties involved in shattered um firstly if a messi gets to leave i'm not too sure basa can easily just bounce back immediately after that regardless of how much investment they make into that's the team. why they want to and even if they retain him cost. even if they retain him it's even going to have them you know um, facing a bigger task a bigger up here especially for the manager but i think the silver but lining he's, he's the silver lining yeah obviously is and that's why I'm even so happy that he hasn't spoken to the media all through because there could be a situation whereby if he chooses to stay, Bassa might just come out um, after that and tell the whole world that he has been injured all this way. That's why he, he, he didn't show up and just tries to cover up all the sort of you know cracks we've been seeing on the way in recent days and weeks. But I think the best place should really just let him leave. Um, at this point in time, he's let already a legend. On what terms? On the terms of actually having any team paying up to like 250 million euros put a price tag on him I'm we know you sure, can't I'm afford not, i'm not sure they'll be able to pay it. i don't even, think even anyone wants to pay 250 million even why not he's messy. messy he's messy he's 33 plus yes he's messy 250 million is a lot of ronaldo money. left for 120 I, de I think to juventus just yes. two years ago and then it was it was 33 too you mean so you now you, you want to turn 120 to 250 because you make the money back it's messy you know you, you begin, if, yes if it's a thing like uh, Manchester <laughs> City you begin to see people wearing <laughs> how would more it Manchester in terms City of the there. FFP rules remember they just got no no, no here's the thing UEFA mm -hmm. have actually relaxed the FFP rule for the year 2020 when they're actually calculating it they won't include um 2020 remember it's supposed to be the profit margin for the last three years so they will exclude 2020 and just count for 17 each so that means you can go what exactly but the point is if any, anything that there. eventually gets to sign is that what you're saying you can in as much as you know that the foreseeable future you'll be able to quickly make up you know for that particular loss and with messi i dare say you can do that within no time i mean in terms million. of merchandise in terms of gates 50 million but I yes. still think 250 is too much, but they should uh, try to get something okay. off. Well, if it's too much, then go and, pay, go, and, go and pay the release clause. Then. <laughs> 700 million euros. I mean, that's just it. It stays. It looks like the only realistic solution here. Okay, let's talk about the UEFA Nations League, where Ronaldo was forced to sit out a Portugal training with toe infection as a 600 goal uh, record. And for the games played in Kiev, Kieran defeated uh, Switzerland 2 1, Why Kifamo was on target, as well as beat Finland 1 0 away. We're just going to catch up with the BBC Premier League update right now. Remember, we are still asking on our Twitter page the first player to score more than 20 goals and also provide more than 10 assists in a single MLS season. A lot of um, you know, tweet here. Okwade says Landon Donovan, uh, Swiss me as uh, Latan Ibrahimovic. Orebo says uh, Zlatan, uh, Nitro, Carlos Vela, uh, Okwade, okay, I think I took that earlier, Ochuko Ekobi, uh, Bradley Wright Phillips, Ades Porti, uh, David Beckham, Aoyemi Thierry Henry, Ade Oju, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, King of Akpata, uh, Joseph Martinez, Adeba Kazim, Bradley Wright Phillips, Altman, David Villa, uh, Oluashe Gul, Carlos Vela, uh, Signa Iduna, Sebastian Giovinco, uh, lots of comments. We'll be back uh, to tell you if indeed we do have a winner this morning. Stay with us. BBC Premier League update from the home of Premier League football. Hello from Colin Harrison at the BBC Sports Centre. Chelsea's new signing Timo Werner was among Premier League players who scored for their countries in Thursday's Nations League qualifiers. 
Werner got Germany's goal in a one-all draw with Spain in Stuttgart. West Ham's Andrei Yarmolenko and Manchester City's Alexander Zinchenko both scored for Ukraine as they beat Switzerland 2-1 in Lviv. Brighton's Shane Duffy, who's just joined Celtic on loan, scored a stoppage time equaliser for the Republic of Ireland in their one-all draw in Bulgaria. And the Fulham striker Alexander Mitrovic scored Serbia's consolation goal in a 3-1 defeat in Russia. Friday's Nations League matches include Scotland against Israel just five weeks before before the sides meet in their European Championship qualifying playoff semi-final. Liverpool's Andy Robertson will captain Scotland on Friday, but he knows he faces stiff competition for his own place in the side from Arsenal's Kieran Tierney. Look, that's up to the manager. Um, the manager can deal with that in terms of positioning, of course. Once the team comes out, then me and Katie will speak if, um, you know, if we're both selected. and um, If not, then we'll deal with that. But look, that's, that's something, you know, Katie's a fantastic player. And for more football news from the BBC, go to bbc.com forward slash football. BBC Premier League update from the home of Premier League football. Okay, great to have you back. There you listen to the BBC Premier League updates. Who's that first uh, player, you know, in the MLS to uh, score 20 goals and also provide more than 10 assists in a single MLS uh, season? Well, we do have a winner, interestingly, yes. Uh, and his name is uh, Chooks Idiaye. His um, answer came in at 6.59. Immediately we dropped it. I mean, it was, it was on standby. Yeah, speed right. Because the, the correct answer is um, Sebastian Jovinko. Yeah, Jovinko did that in the 2015 season with um, FC Toronto or Toronto FC. And interestingly, he was such an amazing player for them that he even repeated the same feat the following season. So when you're talking about Toronto FC, I think um, the, the history of the club is passing incomplete. Are these some guys that just them? Um, you know, what they consider exactly. London Donovan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are really. Well, that was quite easy. You know, we were all not, we were all not happy when uh, Giovinco actually went uh, to the to MLS. MLS yeah. He went to MLS at 28, and we felt uh, that was meant to be the peak of his. But, but you can also argue that he never really had it easy at the Italian Serie. Yeah, yeah, he didn't have it easy. He had at, it was at Juve. He had two loan spells before yeah. eventually going to the MLS. But mm -hmm. uh, well, he found his foot at the MLS, so maybe we can't entirely fault uh, that decision. So an MLS legend. <laughs> Yes, yes. By, by his right. Yes. Yes. Okay. 0809 155 or 0706949300 00. Let's do this again. Are you ready? 5,000 are waiting on the wings for you. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. Yeah, this is Emmanuel. Emmanuel from? From you. Okay, let's have your number, Emmanuel. Number seven. Number seven. Yeah. We actually have only one to five this morning. Number five. Number five. Okay, you just want to go for the last number. Yeah. Okay, tell me. A former Quora United player has rejoined the club. What's his name and from where did he join? Uh, Sorry? Tosi Amoyeli. Tosi Okay, from which club? Uh, cannot be Cannot be I'm sorry, that's not correct. His name actually is Additional Gata from Gombe United. Uh, Thanks for calling. To I think guess. Emmanuel actually uh, listened to Just Football on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Yeah, he we... called in on the show, so... Uh, Hello, I'm good surprised. morning. Good morning, Aziz from Abel Aziz from Kuta. Okay, pick a number, Aziz. Number two. Number two. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes. Okay, this one is simple and straightforward. What's the name of Lille's president? Lille is a club in France. Gerard Lopez. Gerard Lopez. That's straightforward and is correct. Congratulations to you, uh, Aziz. Thank you, sir. Okay, your name in full. Okay, you know the number to send your details to? Yes, yes. Of course you will. Yeah, apparently yes, I will. Thank you, uh, congratulations. Thank you for calling. Okay, let's see. We still have time to pick this morning. Uh, Bolu is nice. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, sir. Samson from Yana Church. Samson from Yana Church. Okay. Uh, pick a number, number Samson. One. Number one. Yes. Okay. How old is Wolves captain Kono Cody? Oh. 
27. Are you sure about that? I guess. You need to be That's sure. That's your answer, right? Yes. Okay. I wanted to scare you a little. <laughs> You're actually very correct. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, let, let, just, I'm just so I'm sure. Did you just throw up that number? I just guessed. Like, seriously? <laughs> wow. My God. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Congratulations. You know, whatever it is, um, you know, wherever you summon that from, yeah, you know, keep, keep, keep that in, it in must be a very great yeah. counter. Okay, so your Samson what, please? I will get me a line about the Samson. Okay, you will need to send your account details uh, to this number I'm about to call now. Please don't call. I just send it zero eight zero five six nine nine eight six eight zero. I call the number again zero eight zero five six nine nine eight six eight zero just send your details and we'll do the needful thank you for calling bolu can we still do one more okay. okay hello good morning it's a special friday today hello good morning hello yes good morning no good morning sir uh, okay your my, name, my where name you coming from my name is ramil Kolawal from Dilsa. okay let's have your number number two number two already taken number four number four Okay, I hope you can hear me well. Okay. Okay, so here goes a question. Who were Ferrari's drivers in the 2010 Formula One season? Huh? Very hard. I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Uh, Felipe Massa and Fernando Alonso. And that's it. Um, well, we have to leave uh, right now. Um, should I throw up one for Bolu? Look at the <laughs> list. <laughs> Who's the next opponent of Svetna appearing cover in the ongoing US Open? For real, we talked about it this morning. We talked about it less than 20 minutes ago, Bully. You can't disappoint me on this one. Come on. No, no, he has just Come disappointed on. you. I'm Bully. sorry about that. Okay, here you are. Okay, we have to go right now this morning. Thanks to you all and congratulations to our winner. Of course, to all of you, we're all winners yeah, uh, right true. here on Sports Bank, especially on Fridays like this. International friendlies, get a draw once, code the vote, Tunisia beating, comment NFF organizing top quality friendlies, wants to use matches to build players' confidence. Thank you so much. Our fate I did it this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. And to our band, the Animation. Oh, just gracious. Do have a lovely weekend. Thanks to Bolu.